My name is Carrie Thomas, and I am a full-time Pilates instructor, and here in Topeka, Kansas, that's what I do. Nice. Kansas in the house. Yes. <laughs> I've never been to Kansas. I'm, no. I don't even think I've been through Kansas, actually. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily. Yeah. I don't it's more of a drive-through kind of place. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple places you could stop, but... There's really not much here. May I ask out. about tornadoes? Like, do you have a tornado shelter? We do, but the because of weather change, the Tornado Alley has actually dropped to the south. Oh. So now, like, Tennessee and Texas and New Orleans are getting more of the storms, and they kind of just drop of us a little bit more now. So it's a little, it's a little weird over the last few years. It's changed quite a bit. Wow. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Learn something new. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, climate change information. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, like reinforcing I'm... a message. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Kira, I'm still reflecting on our last kind of impromptu freestyle conversation on so many levels. I just listened uh, to it too today. So I'm, I'm up on it. Yeah. Very great chat. Thank you. Such a good chat. Um, and just what I was saying earlier about like movement healing and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Can you just speak a little bit more to that just from your own experience? Okay. Well, like I, well, I'll just go in order of the story. So I mm -hmm. got married and then I moved to Louisville, Kentucky to join the ballet company. Mm -hmm. And then about three, maybe four months after being at the company, I got a phone call that I needed to head home and got the worst knock on the door that you can ever get of, hello, may I please come in? And I'm sorry to inform you that your husband was killed in Iraq. And from that moment, it was just mush. Like I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't, I couldn't remember choreography anymore. So like ballet had always been my get out of depression, help me with anxiety that kind of thing. And it just wasn't anymore. It was a stress now because I couldn't put my heart into it. And which broke me even more because this is the one thing that's been with me my whole life. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard for me to figure out what it was. And then like I told you one day, I was just a sobbing mess on the floor and found one of my books. And it was the last book that he had given me uh, when we were together at Christmas. Because uh, we barely had any money, so we're at, he was stationed in Italy, so we're like at the little like Walgreens, pretty much, the PX. And we gathered a bunch of stuff, and one of the things he got me was a Pilates book. And he had written a nice little inscription in it, which then, of course, made me ball more. And I was like, you know what, what is this Pilates thing? Let me go try this, because I need to do something. I can't just keep being a heap on my floor and having my ballet mistress bring me food. Like, I can't just survive this way. And he wouldn't want me to survive that way. So I went there and I was like, oh, well, this is like ballet calisthenics. Like, that's what I thought it was. And then as I went through, it was like, oh, like things just started connecting more for me for whatever disconnect happened from before with ballet. So I just kind of fell in love with it. I could remember again. I felt motivated to want to get up and do stuff. And so with that, I was like, if that can change how I felt from this extreme grieving process, what can that do just for aches and pains? What can that do for depression? What can yes. that do for anxiety? And so I just kind of dove head first into it and then danced for a little bit longer and then was like, you know, I just, it's not for me anymore and broke my heart to have to let go of that. But it, I opened a new door with Pilates and then just started training and studying and been doing Pilates since 2006 now of teaching. So yeah. that's my, my healing story of Pilates of what I've done. Nice. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I, um, mm -hmm. I feel like most of us, especially those of us in the, the dance world, um, I think m most of us have come to Pilates through some sort of trauma. Mm -hmm. um, uh, physical, mental, emotional combination of all of them. Right. Um, 
But I definitely feel like when you talk about needing to reconnect to your body after essentially being disembodied due to whatever it was for so long, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I feel like Pilates, I mean, some, for some people it's yoga and, you know, I'm not taking right. away from that, but I just feel like Pilates answers that in so many different ways uh, that I, I, I just think that it's, this work is the best work there is in a lot of ways because of that. So, yes. um, yeah, it's nice hearing that. Yeah, I was going to echo that with saying I don't like throwing around the word magic a lot to say like the magic of Pilates or the magic of this or the magic of that. But in this situation, it's almost like you hear the magic of its movement and how it worked through your body mm -hmm. and how it connected with you. Yes. I mean, it was my missing link because my movement had always been dance. So mm -hmm. for it not to be that and then to have this not ballet movement, yes, ballet movement, but I found all my weaknesses in Pilates because I was so used to being turned out. And you're like, what do you mean glue my legs together and hold my inner thighs? And my legs are trembling. I'm like, I thought I was in pretty good shape. Apparently yes. I'm not. <laughs> so it was a very good perspective of like, oh, this is a different challenge for me and different muscles and oh, okay. And then, you know, after a couple of years of doing it, I was like, why was I not doing this more while I was dancing? Like, yes. I, like, go, oh, yeah. why is this not more? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, from the sport, from the football world, I was like, why wasn't I doing this while I was playing football? So it's not just dancers out there who are kicking themselves. You know, other athletes are kicking themselves too. <laughs> well, but the difference yeah. though is that in dance, like there was always, at least for me, there was always a Pilates studio adjacent, you know, in mm. college. There was this, both of the schools I went to had really great Pilates studios in them and they sat uh. empty because nobody knew what to do. What to do and that. I was like, oh, that stuff looks really great. Yeah, mm, I'm super buff and fabulous. I don't need that. Yes. that. Right, yes, right, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, football, I, I think maybe now you probably have more access, but back then, oh, forget it, nobody. Just... No, zero access, so that's right. a good point. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you should feel bad then. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, this, um. That's that's the thing, right? Like, I, I feel like that's uh, when you're talking about those uh, those weaknesses, you know, speaking to both of you athletes in the room, you see it as weakness, but then at the same time, you see it as an opportunity for strength, mm -hmm. right? And that's a piece. Like, if it was just the weakness piece, then you'd be like, peace out. I don't need this. But if it's like weakness, but wait a minute, I can get strong here. Let's get strong here now. Yes. Yeah, it points out all of the flaws, yes. you know, because, and I say it all the time, they didn't tell you how to get your leg up here. They just said the leg had to get up there or else. Mm -hmm. So basically you're cobbling together this Jenga tower of hope and prayer that you can get it up there, keep it up there and, you know, not get yelled at. And, you know, eventually it, it comes apart because you didn't have the foundation to begin with. It was just hopes and dreams at that point. Yes. And, you know, the people that actually make it through adulthood as dancers, I mean, when you think about how many people get into it, even in the collegiate level, you know, through collegiate mm -hmm. level, like few and far between make it. And a lot of it, in my case particularly, injury is what ended it for me. And it's because I didn't have that foundation. Foundation. Yeah, so when I started uh, dating and now the partner that I'm with, uh, he danced for like 20 years with the company. And like, I kept nagging him like, you need to do Pilates, you need to do Pilates, your hips are uneven, yeah. like your sockets are wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. And eventually he was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. And I was like, I'm not training you because that's dangerous to train family. But, yes, the end. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, you need to do this. And then he fell in love with it. And then he taught for a little while and then stuff happened. And so he doesn't teach anymore, but he loved that passion of it. And he kind of transitioned after he retired of dance for it for a while. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Truth. Uh, I finally listened. Comment section. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. For me, it helps me restore, because when I got injured, it was pretty traumatic for me to be injured. It was mm -hmm. traumatic because I knew it was the end. Like, I danced yeah. the night before, the next day I tried to get up and I couldn't weight bear on either foot. And I was just like, it's gonna be fine. But you know how, you know, your spidey sense is like, it's not mm -hmm. fine, you are toast. And so, you know, that's, I describe it as having lost dance. Um, yeah. And in that regard, I wasn't interested in even moving anymore. And I had to wear these ugly, stupid orthopedic shoes, which did not go with anything in my wardrobe. But if I did not wear them, I could not, I literally walk. could not walk. Right, and I right. just remember feeling so, at that point, there was a part of me that was happy because my relationship with dance had gotten a little bit screwy. Um, but I just remember being so broken by the fact that my body had just given up on me. Yes. And that's the way I saw it. So like I, I had a terrible relationship with my body for a few years after that. And um, Pilates brought it back to me. Pilates said, you know, you have this, you're still in there. Dance is still in there. Movement is still in there. Um, so, you know, that was how I got the, the intro to healing through mm -hmm. Pilates is because I, I was pretty much done. I was like, I'm trading this thing in, I'm selling it for scrap, whatever it is. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, it got me back online and moving in a way that I wished I had when I was dancing. Yes. Carrie, did you have that same sense of like your body betraying you in, the, in those moments as well? Yes, because it wasn't even so much my body, it was my mind I felt like betrayed me. Yes. Because like, again, like I had a horrific ballet teacher. She was torture, like how she didn't get arrested for child abuse, I don't know. And like, so I Short went through that in, yeah. So I was already in that kind of like belittled, you'll never be good enough. Your leg is never high enough. You'll never turn enough. You'll never jump mm -hmm. high enough. You're never, 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 never. And, and I think that's what Kyle gave to me. My husband was that he gave me that, like, don't listen to her. Cause he danced mm -hmm. with her too. So he knew her crazy and what it was. And it was just like, you need to let that go. And I was like, fine, I'll just figure it out. Cause he was just the type of person that, Everybody loved him and every everything he said, it was just happy as punch, like, because he was a ballet dancer as well. So like, I wish there was a video of it, but there was another ballet dancer in his group and they would do little swans in full combat to like entertain <laughs> everyone. And it was like, why is there no video? But it was before fancy cell phones, but yeah. like that, that kind of push towards me because he was the first person in my life to be like, no, you are good enough as who you are. Yeah, you have some things to work on, but mm -hmm. you're doing, you, you need to go here. And I think that kind of pushed me a little bit more into finding something that was better with the ballet because it was always that, that brain failed me. It was my always, yes. helped me with my depression, helped me with dealing with crazy things of growing up and mm -hmm. Now here's like the most traumatic thing in my life at this point, and it's not helping me. So I really felt like my brain failed me. And then my yes. body failed me because I wasn't eating and I wasn't sleeping. And then I got really sick for almost like a month and a half. Like I was out, like I couldn't go to class. I couldn't, I couldn't perform a nutcracker. My ballet mistress was bringing me food because she didn't want me to leave the house. And I had lost like probably 20 pounds to be honest so I was like yeah. barely anything there and barely anything there as a dancer and then you take away all of that and it just so then my then I felt like my body failed me so it was mind then body yeah 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 yes that uh that grieving process right yes wow never ends sure. yeah. right yeah but I mean, it just, it transitions yeah. and functions That's and whatnot. Like I still can't That's hear, 
taps without tears. I can't mm -hmm. see the folding of the flag without tears, whether it's on a TV show or something. I just always like, okay, deep breath. Tears are going to form. It's okay. <laughs> and yeah, but now I'm a functioning person and I have two beautiful little feral children and <laughs> They keep me busy. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they're toddlers, but they're feral. <laughs> they will climb anything, swing yep. on anything. Toddlers are feral. <laughs> toddlers are. Oi, oi, oi. I, uh, I couldn't even imagine going back to that. Mm -mm. My child is 16, and he's like a ghost. Like, <laughs> I heard yeah. a rumbling. Somewhere. <laughs> yes. I call my kids ninjas, too. Like, you never know they're around. They're totally, yeah. Yeah, it's so funny. Uh, Trader's Choice 179 says, I miss Pilates. That's definitely helpful for us boxers. Hmm. Indeed. Uh, indeed. See, uh, Victor Pilates here, too. There's a couple guys in their space here. So it's, uh, it's always fun. I'm always, like, cheering for my, my guys in the Pilates space or guys who, are, like, have a respect for this craft. You know? Well, so, and Victor comes from dance land, too. Like, he knows yes. all the trauma and turmoil. I mean, yeah. he loves it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah it's 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 an interesting relationship and i i think it goes for you know take dance out of it make it a okay. sport make it even an intellectual yeah. pursuit you know um when we have a certain relationship with something whatever it is and it changes on a dime you know that that it's painful the the pain whether it doesn't even have to be a physical pain that that aching right. in your heart and soul is so big and it's it's not always easy especially if you're a person that doesn't like to be vulnerable doesn't like to put your emotions out there right. it's not easy to tap into that and that's why this movement that we do which is ordered and structured mm -hmm. but yet can be freeing and inviting. Uh, I, I think that that speaks to what you're saying, uh, both of you have been saying, um, it, it opens a door. Yes. yes. It opens a door to play with that idea of how can I be vulnerable? Can I be more vulnerable by pushing a little bit harder, by trying something that I don't really think I can do? Just watching that insane teacher over there do it, maybe I can't get there, but the container has been created. I know I'm safe. I'll try it. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Victor's comment there. I would not have had a dance career without mindful movement, Pilates and others. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, so this is my question for you, Carrie, and also Misty coming from the dance world as well. Your identity was wrapped up in being a ballet dancer, a yes. dancer. How much of your identity is wrapped up in being a Pilates teacher now, by contrast? Oh. I would say quite a bit. But at okay. the same time, I think I kind of learned a lesson mm -hmm. in that, that I can't just be a Pilates instructor, and that's my whole everything. And yes, mm -hmm. every time I'm at the airport or I'm at the grocery store, I'm like, oh, your posture. Oh, your hip problem. <laughs> oh, God. Do you want a I card? I don't want to see anymore. <laughs> um, but yes. I think yes. that transition of realizing that I can't just have one thing. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, Pilates may be my big thing, mm -hmm. but I have my Venn diagram of other things now. Of yes. being and beautifully focusing of myself, somewhere. which has been a big mm -hmm. one in the last few years, especially since yes. I've had children. And then my family and being more active in that. Um, well, now that I have toddlers, I have to be more active in that, whether I want to or not. But just creating those communications again, because my mm -hmm. family was very much against ballet. So for me to kind of be like, hey, I survived ballet. Look what I'm doing. <laughs> want to yes. talk again? It's cool. Um, and just a lot of that. So it was kind of just being more aware of, the people around me, my family and myself, but especially mm. myself of like, yes. I need to do self care. So, cause all my care and all my confidence was in Kyle. So when he was gone, it was like, 
who am I? I, I don't know. I'm a ballet dancer. And I was yes. his wife. Like, that was my best friend. Like, I don't, I don't know. And then it was like, oh, okay. So after many, many years, it, mm -hmm. it kind of got into it, which is part of the reason, like, I have on my back, like, a giant phoenix of rebirth, regrowth, re-keep, yes. re-keep growing. Don't just grow a little and go, okay, well, I'm plateaued. I'm good. I'm, I'm growing. where I should yes. be. But keep that moving on. And then especially now becoming a mother in the last several, I guess, four years here and being a geriatric mother. Um, Your eyes are still open. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it's just a different, like, that different perspective of, like, wow, this is, this is different. I have to make sure I take care of myself. I have to take care of the kids. I've got to take care of my clients. And then mm. I've also got to make sure the energy of my clients doesn't come home with me. It's got to stay yeah. at the studio. Right. I don't need extra energy running around the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So I think it's just finding that balance of not letting one thing be there. So I have my Pilates, but like I love my aerial stuff as well. And I love the yes. TRX and like I love paddle boarding. So I try and integrate more and not just like for the first several years, I was like, Pilates only, Pilates is the only thing, yeah, it's yeah, the only yeah. thing I can do. So I kind of went very into that at first. So I think now sure. it's a lot more open. Very uh, I get, I can, no, that's a great answer. <laughs> I can go in so many different directions with that. Because now if, when someone walks into your studio, walks into your class, and you see that their world, I know, I, I knew Demi was going to say something about the, the hammock in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you see someone who has their world wrapped up in dance or has their world wrapped up in one thing, mm -hmm. how do you handle them? How do you help navigate, help them to navigate through to place of finding their identity outside of just the one thing? Ooh. Um, cause I know that sometimes I scream at that, right? Like, like you want to just like cut to the chase and just like give them the answers. But the reality is that they have to go on their path to some degree as well. Right. I, I guess in that case, that's what I have my, my, my little basket of tricks. And so I have certain little exercises that are based on, like, they're my Pilates fundamental, like, test. Like, let's see what's going on there. Yeah. But then if I see something in particular happening, but I can tell that they're just, like, especially an athlete, they're like, I'm just going to muscle through this. I'm strong. I'm going to do this. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm let's try this a little differently. And then I have my toy box over here and I'm like, okay, well, instead of just doing like thigh hinges, let's now sit on the BOSU and now don't move your pelvis while you do that. Instead of this little like booty cha-cha shake you have from side to side. And they're like, Oh, okay, fine. And they just get up there and then they're like, Oh, and they almost fall off. And it's that making them think about it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And then, then they're a little bit more open to me about what it is that they really need. Because mm -hmm. some of the people, like you said, will come in for more. They need movement, but they need that emotional movement. They need a lateral bend because they need to release all the emotion that they've kept 20 years right here. And that mm -hmm. might be a surprise to them when they do that of like, that feels good, but it hurts and I want to cry. I'm not sure what's happening. But letting them know that it's a safe space to be like, it's okay. That's fine. If you cry, you cry. If you need to curse at me, curse at me. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I won't take it personally. Yes. Yeah. But letting, finding for each individual that, that connection. And so I kind of use little exercises to see, A, their personality. Are they yes. more of a type A? Or are they more of a this? Like, do they feel shy in the movement? And that kind of helps me guide of like, okay, I need to throw this at you to kick your butt a little bit to make you not embarrassed or unhappy but humbled a little yes. or okay i need to do this because you're just manhandling everything so we need to you know work on some balance stuff and see how that yes. feels and some lighter springs and so just finding playing with my baskets and then figuring out which one is the right combination of baskets for each person yes yes for sure yes. And when, when in doubt, throw them on the hammock because that'll lead them to laugh and, <laughs> and, and be kids, right? Because I, I'm speaking for myself, but Carrie, I have a feeling you might see yourself a little bit in this. 
when you're so used to moving in a prescribed regimented way, we forget the fringes of movement. We forget the play, the laughter in it. We don't know, uh, we have decided because our movement's been prescribed what the peak is. Yes. Even if it's not explicitly defined as such. So when we add that play time, when we add that, oh yeah, well, you really like doing footwork. Well, let's do footwork on the hammock here and do some swishes and swings. Uh -huh. Then it's like, oh, I didn't even know that this could feel this way. Yes. And once you see that glint or that smile in their eyes, it's like, <laughs> got them. Yes. <laughs> and then that's, that's when the magic happens. And that's when the mm -hmm. trust is built, I think. Yes. Very much so. Wow. You know, so I just had this memory of like one of the guys I was working with who likes to be really comfortable and controlled in his work. And his aha moment where I was like, gotcha, wasn't a smile, but it was like this like steely determination in his eyes. Like, okay, let's get this. <laughs> And it was the same as like, it was a cracking in a different way mm -hmm. of I'm, I'm going to go for this and I might fail, but I'm going to go for it anyways, instead of I'm going to stay within the safe range of movement. Yes, absolutely. And the eyes of the tell, right? Because even if they yes. look harder than ever, yes. there's a little smile in those eyes that says, yes. I am here with you. We are like this. Yes. Yes. That's like a little it. kid, I may, I may fall off my bike, but I'm going to try this jump anyways type look. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's the joy. I love it. That's, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we were talking about those, uh, the fringes of movement. I was talking with my client this morning who's an optometrist, and he was, he was talking about vision. And the vision, the spectrum that we see isn't the full spectrum. Right. Right? There's heat waves, there's gamma rays, there's really like there's all this stuff that's outside of our scope of what we can actually see. They're also within that spectrum. And I think that like that's it. Like we see this. This is our movement. Mm -hmm. When really the spectrum is like way out to here. Yeah. You know? it, Very much so. Or way down to here. Yes. It, it goes in both ways. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I am um, I think when you add vision into it, it's, it's another full of wax altogether because of the emotions that we assign to what it is that we can see or even hear sensorily and how that plays into how we move as well. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. somebody with a, a vision impairment experiences movement very differently um, yes. and the way they access it can be different as well. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I, I think that's an important thing that we have to remember, too. I did a, one of the teacher trainings I did. I can't remember which one, but I remember them explicitly saying, do not allow your client to work with their eyes closed. Mm. And I said, why? And yeah. she said, well, because if their eyes are closed, they're not paying attention. And I know that not to be true because, I mean, I would rather rely on my auditory sense than my visual sense any day. Uh, my yes. hearing is so sharp. Um, and, I, and I was challenging it and she was just finally like, Misty, stop asking questions. I'm like, eh. so I gotcha, didn't I? But I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a really big deal. And, and it comes back to the idea of allowing people to experience the experience without yeah. dictating the experience. And there are times when you do maybe want the eyes open or you want the eyes looking in a certain direction for a lot of reasons. Yes. But again, we have to, I think, especially when we're talking about emotional healing, allow people to show up experiencing it however they experience it. And then we can start to need and massage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Kara, I always ask the question, like, who your ideal client is. And just based on how we've been talking about how this is beyond a specific person, and we're talking about just a broad spectrum of movement, I'm really curious to find out, like, who excites you the most to work with of the different demographics of people that pass through? 
Oh, that's a tough one. Because I would almost say I'm like split on that because I love having my classes, whether they're math classes or former classes that I have able bodies that know their modifications that don't have crazy hip, like spinal fusions and things like that. And I love to be able to play and yeah. those more exercises that you don't do as often, but with that small group. Mm -hmm. But I would have to say my my niche, my what I work with the most, what always tends to find me are people that are at the the end of their rope. That are mm. like, I'm done with physical therapy, they won't help me anymore. Or yes. I haven't worked out ever in my life, I don't know what to do and I'm about to have a hip replacement. Right. Like I've yes. just, or I've just worked with this gamut and I've been very blessed when I worked at like a box, big box gym, that I got all the people that nobody wanted to work with. So I got to work with this beautiful woman that was 400 pounds. I got to work with this one, her mother, who had severe neurological and lesions through her body of across her nerves. So like I knew she was having a bad day if she walked in backwards, because that was the only way she could get her body to go was to do that. Yes. Um, like I got to work with a guy who was a construction worker who got hit in the head and had complete like frontal lobe and cortex damage. So he had to learn to talk, to breathe, to walk, like, and he still wasn't walking when I was working with him. He wasn't talking. So him and I had to work through eye communication and I had yes. to figure out like, are we going to work today or are you going to be a little stinker today? And then there was the one day that was like the one of my best days as a blood instructor is one day he just looked at me, turned his head and did a full roll up. And I just about fell to the floor and I looked at his wife because she was always in the room to help me move him because he was a big yeah. guy. And we were like, did you just see that? And I was like, do that again. And he went down and looked at me and gave me like his little half smirk, a little half smirk. came back up. And I was like, well, look at you. And he was just starting to speak at them. He was like, thank you. And I was like, look at what you did. Because I didn't do that. You yes. did that. Yes. And, and that connection. And I guess that's really the best client I want. Is I want someone who's willing to go on a journey. I want yes. someone who's willing to learn yes. about their body. Not, tell, not have me tell them, oh, your quads are weak. Or your quads are work too much. I want you yes. to know that. Because whether I keep you for a season or a lifetime... Mm -hmm. I want you to feel confident Preach. in your Pilates movement, whether you go to Chicago or Italy or whatever, to be like, yeah, these are the springs that I use on this kind of equipment. And yeah, my teacher tells me to do that all the time. And oh, that's a new mm -hmm. perspective. I've never thought of doing it that way. And I want them to be open yes. to other teachers and not mm -hmm. just hoard on to me like a little safety blanket. But I want right. them to feel good because it's about them and them yes. growing. So that's my, I guess, my key factor for a student is I want you to be going on a journey, whether that's a workout journey or whether that's, yeah, let's dive in this and find your body and find your mind and we will do this. And if you just want to come in and work out and do that, it's fine, but I'll, I'll slowly peel you away exactly. to, get to where you feel comfortable, but I'll, I'll peel this and get you there. But it just depends on how thick your onion is, really. Right. Girls love it talk, man. <laughs> love it that's right ali says take us taking us to church carrie and a hundred percent it yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah yes um i i wrote the title a uh, gentle but uncomfortable so that was just like something that i i lined i threw it that kind of captured what you were talking about last time and you just put that back out there again mm -hmm. just like there's a sense of the gentleness of just doing just enough to build their trust so that you can just get them uncomfortable so that they can actually get to where they need to go. Yes. Cause nothing changes without a little discomfort. Yes. Right. Yes. I mean, it's all, otherwise we're just repeating the same old, same old. And if we could only wake up with the same alignment, the same mind, the same body every day, life would be so much easier, but we don't. We have health and mental issues. We wake up with because we slept for all. So we have to adjust from each day, even for each client for each week. Like I might see someone on Tuesday, but then I see him on Thursday and I'm like, oh, what happened? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, your brother died and your cat died and okay, well, we're going to readjust how we're doing today. So that's kind of how I view it. Yeah. 
I love that. And it also, again, it, it encourages them to take ownership mm -hmm. of the experience. You know, yes. they can choose to only do exactly what you say, and it never gets any better. And when you ask them to try something new, they can look at you and say, oh, no. Mm -hmm. Or they can say, there's a reason why she's asking me to do this. I'm going right. to step in. And, you know, I've worked with a couple, not very many, but a couple of people who just don't want to grow and change. And, you mm -hmm. know, typically those people will self-select themselves yes. out. And so we, I think anyway, have the fun opportunity, duty, whatever you want to call it, to keep them just uncomfortable enough. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but not, you know, we don't want to blow them up. Let them <laughs> right. dental, not drill. Um, <laughs> but keep them uncomfortable enough to get them thinking about what the possibilities might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Those people who select their way out, sometimes I feel like I'm pretty harsh with them sometimes because you know that they're running from something mm -hmm. sometimes and you call them out on what they're running from while they're running away and you hope that at least they'll hear that truth as they're exiting you hope yeah you but, hope but i mean there's there's going to be that little clump of people like i can give an example of i subbed a, like a bar class for a lady and i was just like my head was gonna explode because I like had to yell, which is not my style of teaching, to get them to focus. I was like, yeah. you guys were just da -da 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 like little hens in a chicken club there. Like it was just like, ladies, we gotta move, we gotta do stuff, we're gonna do this. Mm -hmm. And they were so rude the entire time, talking and talking. And I told that teacher, I was like, that's your class, I'm never subbing that again. Yeah. And then they came back and told her, and they're like, she was so grumpy. And she made us do stuff we didn't like. And I was Aww. like, no, Aww. we did planks. We did this. And I don't care if you don't like me because there wasn't a mutual <laughs> respect in this room. Right. And I'm at the point <laughs> at that time, especially where I was like, no, I'm gonna put my foot down because I've let people walk all over me in different studios and different things to say, well, no, this is the only way it can be done. And this is the only way this will be done. And it's like, no, and that's where I'm like a split personality teacher. I'm very like, I have mine. This is the way we have respect. We don't come in partying into the studio, respect that other people might be working. You know, don't come talking in on your phone. Mm -hmm. But I'm not in like saying like some of my ballet teachers where it's like, no, if you come in, I want you to say hi. I want you to feel welcome. I don't want you to feel like we're coming into church and, do, 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 and I'm not allowed to say yeah. anything and look at anybody. Like, I don't want that either, but there has to be this shared respect. feeling and respect for it. And it's like, yes. those are the type of things that I just don't want anymore. Like, if you don't want to be here, don't be here. I'll suggest another teacher for you. I know mm -hmm. Bobby over here loves to chatty cat. You might just fit perfectly mm -hmm. with that person and you'll figure it out on your own. And if you don't actually improve, that's not my issue. If you need to that, you'll come back to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that if you're leading in your space, right? If you're setting the tone, those folks that don't really want to grow will find that they can't stay. It yes. will get very uncomfortable for them, not because you're being rude or mean or unethical, but the energies don't match and there's nothing like it's i say it's like wearing your grandma's underpants like if the energy doesn't fit it's right. it's chafing you don't want to be in that situation mm -hmm. so you're going sorry martin i, I can't unsee that now thank you <laughs> <laughs> well see but now you know what i mean <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but yeah they're they're not gonna stay and you know, that's not to say that they won't come back. It's not to say that yes. they're not going through a thing and they're just perhaps not willing to mm -hmm. expand and explore at that time or in that environment. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, the Pilates in environment or experience is a little bit too naked because it's too up close and personal, even in a small class, class format. Mm -hmm. um, 
sometimes people want to be a part of something, but they want to hide within yes. that. So yes. over time, they, they eventually may come back and may be ready, but if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. And that's why I tell people if, if you have clients that leave your studio, it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world to say goodbye. Right. If it's just not there anymore. It's just not there. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's part of the journey of just like knowing yourself too. And there's this, this safe adventure of as you lean more into who you are, people leave, people arrive, and the people that arrive grow and see progress and see success in greater ways than if you continue to be malleable to everyone around you. And then everyone gets like a marginal mm -hmm. level of success. So yes. I'd rather cut my losses with those people, welcome these people, and see everyone get to hear. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. That's good stuff. I'm trying to unsee that grandma's underpants piece <laughs> there. But... <laughs> that's a mystism that's going to be immortalized. <laughs> but... It, as most of my imagery is, it's visceral. Like you see it in your mind's eye, you feel it in your body, and then you just have to figure out what to do with it after that. <laughs> like playing the banjo naked under a full moon, or that's what it was, I think. No. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I, I, it's, I don't know yes. where they come from, Martin. They just I open my mouth and uh, they fall right out. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> um, Carrie, thank you so much. And this has uh, been you. such a, a rich conversation. Thank you so much. Yes. yes. Wonderful, wonderful talk today. You know, I, I just I appreciate your transparency of just of your journey and how you bring that journey to your people. Like, like all I can imagine, everyone that you work with is just so much richer for having crossed your path. I hope so. You know what yeah. I like about you is that you just say it. Like, you're not dancing around it. You're not putting bows on no. it. That's why I love when Carrie's in the chat and thought flow is because Carrie is always just saying it, period. And that, yeah. is, that is something that I really, really respect in a person. Thank you. And I have to say thank you to you, Misty, for having, I'm going to forget her last name now on the spot, but Jessica, who worked with the Z Health Jessica and all Foster. that. Yeah, I yeah. took a session with her and it was like, oh my gosh, it was just amazing. And in just the little time that we worked together in just a two, two 10 second little pressure points and my neck completely changed its movement. It was just amazing. She, I just, That's I loved that. So brilliant. Wow. I've been working with her weekly now and um, it's just really, really helping me understand my neurologic self a lot better. Yes. And things that I was willing to write off as just being a disaster, I've learned that they're not disastrous. I just have to find a better access point. And right. so, you know, it's nice to be able to support all this other work we do with mm -hmm. other stuff. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, who was that? You want to put that, put that in the chat there? Just so. What was that? Who is that you're speaking of? And that you can. Uh... Her name is Jessica Foster, and her company yes. is Neurology of Presence, which is very long. Okay. But um, she's brilliant. She's a Z Health neuro uh, neuro performance coach. And okay. um, you know, if you ever see me with my blue glasses on or my green glasses on, it's because mm -hmm. I'm either trying to upregulate or downregulate my nervous system. So I'm either communicating better or I'm resting better I'm in really high test. My spins, I call it. I put my green glasses on. I'm like chilling. And I, I would have had no idea that this was even possible had I not met Jessica. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Yes. I'm very, I'm going to start working with her probably once a week here soon. And oh, we'll I, compare I went ahead and started like studying the Z Health stuff because I was like, this is like we were geeking out on nerd of fascinating stuff back before. So I was like, yeah. I love this. I love learning. I love new things. And it was just beyond baffling to me. And like, I yeah. always loved the nervous system, but that was just such a shock to my, to my body and how quickly something can change with just one touch. Wow. Really? Sorry. I, I, so on what, what show was that that you heard that? Was it 
it was on Thought Flow. Flow. She was on Thought Thought Flow Flow with us on Thursday night in February. February? Yeah, I think it was right after I came back from my trip. Yeah, I think it was February. But um, I will, uh, Martin, why don't I see if we can get her to join us here? Yes, please do. And another shameless plug for Thought Flow as we finish off here, Misty. (laughs) Thought Flow is tomorrow night this week, uh, tomorrow okay. night at 7 p.m. Eastern. And I'm um, chatting with Nikki Taylor Stewart as always. Would mm-hmm. love to have you guys check it out. I um, don't remember what we're talking about tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you just pulled them I don't even know. If we've decided. And we have a great guest tomorrow <laughs> that is, I haven't checked yet. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> probably my cat. Yes, yes. Right. But good stuff nonetheless. We always have great conversations just like mm-hmm. we did here. Always. So. Yeah. Well, thank Very you well. again, yes. Carrie. Thank so you. good to meet you. And All the best. Thank you for the space Boom. and the time. And yes. everyone else, thank thanks you. for listening. Yes, thank you guys. Okay, have a great day, everyone. You too. <laughs>